I'm Bill. I'm with Kalimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage where today we have the Street Fighter V4S up on the lift for a modification that you guys might be thinking, is this really needed? Now, if you've got a Street Fighter, you know this mod is needed. Now, early on, we had a quick shifter upgrade and uh, I still have some problems with the quick shifter. Uh, it kind of shifts from third to fourth. Sometimes it pops back down into third. Sometimes you get these false neutrals, but today, hopefully we finally have a fix with the Precision Quick Shifter by Cordona. And uh, we're gonna walk through a quick install, hopefully a quick install, because I'll tell you, the instructions are kind of like my uh, Japanese manuals on the equipment that I fix. It's written in Swedish, translated to English by a Swedish interpreter. Yes, it reads just like that. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to kind of understand what they're talking about, but I think we've got the gist of it. So the uh, Cordona uh, Quick Shifter is available. Uh, I'm gonna link some uh, information down below. If you guys are interested in this, send me a DM on Instagram. I'll link it down below right now, Calimoto TV, of course, and I'll get you the information for the Cordona uh, Quick Shifter if you guys are interested, and I'm gonna get you guys a price that is crazy insane. It's worth the modification. So uh, let's get the chassis cam on, and let's go ahead and tear off the other Quick Shifter, tear everything apart, get the new one back, mounted back on, start to do a little bit of programming. It works in regular shift or GP shift, FYI. Uh, but you have to program it and tell it which way to go. That's the confusing part. So um, let's get to work. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the box. The box, uh, again, this is the Cordona. Uh, this is the uh, 420 Evo for the Street Fighter V4S and V4. Uh, and this is basically what it comes with. You'll see here, you've got the connecting rod and you have the actual quick shifter, um, which is basically plug and play. Uh, the adjustment and the programming is what we're gonna have to play with. So we'll go ahead and start threading this on. Now this goes just basically just like we have installed here. So what we're gonna try to do is kind of duplicate the length and then get it locked down because we want it to be the same length. Now, um, as you guys know, I have the Bonimichi rear sets and uh, so we're going to be having to adjust those just a little bit to remove these. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove these two bolts to get this peg loose. Uh, on the stock rear sets, I can't remember, but you'll have basically have to get to the bolt here that holds the quick shifter. Then you've got, got of course, the quick shifter bolt here. Um, and both of those bolts, all of these bolts are gonna be running a, a five millimeter here and even the bolt there. And then you're gonna have to get down here, underneath here with the uh, three millimeter, excuse me, four millimeter, there's two bolts, one bolt here, one bolt there, which undoes the cover, which is where all the wires run and uh, they, the connection should be under here. Uh, and so you're also gonna be snipping a couple zip ties here. And there's one of these little rubber ones here, which will retain. So you can see here, we'll pull this one off and then there's the zip tie there and then uh ooh, greasy uh and then we should be able to get it so let's go ahead and first remove the rear set and get this dangling and then go ahead through to the plug all right now we have the rear set taken off here <laughs> a little bit of a bummer uh now we're going to go ahead and remove the bolt from the rear of the rear set to release the shifter so remove this bolt completely. And then that's going to detach us from our rear set. So we'll set that aside. And now we have our quick shifter loose. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and take that same <clears throat> five millimeter and go ahead and go into the shift position and then go ahead and break that loose. And remove this bolt. Now, as you remove this bolt, you're gonna notice you've got a washer and the bolt, make sure you continue to utilize that. Looks like the bolt's a little stuck in there. All right, now there are two four millimeters right up here. Hopefully we've got the better camera angle. We'll be able to get this removed.
All right, so once we've snipped the zip ties, we see actually this plug runs up a little bit further into behind this uh, piece right here. So we're gonna go ahead and have to remove this side piece in addition to get to the plug. All right, so once you guys are done with the zip ties, uh, we can see here that this actually leads back right here. So you're gonna have to remove the front little cover, which is one bolt down here, one bolt back here, and then the side cover, which is one, two, three, three bolts, excuse me, <clears throat> which now gives us access to our final piece of the puzzle, and that's the connector to the quick shifter. So we're gonna go ahead and push this down, and get this pin pulled apart, and we can feed this through here, hopefully. All right, and now we have the stock quick shifter. Remember, this is actually, it goes like this. So remember we're down here is where it starts. So we're going to take our uh, Cordona quick shifter and we're gonna try to line this up as close as possible. Okay, so we're gonna try to adjust. You can see it's, it's quite a bit shorter. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust this uh, wherever it needs to be adjusted. So we can go a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here and we're gonna to get to the point where we're the same length. Make sure you are the same length. All right, so what we've done is we've adjusted it equal parts in the three parts to basically adjust this to be the same length. Now, one of the things you wanna be careful with on this middle one is not to take too much out of the rod and not to take too much out of the shifter. So I've kind of equally expanded this out and then we've gotten a little bit here, a little bit there. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a nine millimeter, which is gonna hold the rod, and then you're gonna take your 10 millimeter for your nut. And what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and tighten this nut really, really, really well. So we're gonna go ahead and hold this nice and firm and get that 10 millimeter nice and tight. Now make sure that you're not in the bar, right? Make sure you're on the nut completely, right on the edge of the nut and get it nice and tight, okay? Then you're gonna go and you're gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna get this nice and tight, okay? Then you're gonna go into the uh, quick shifter here. You can see how that's loose, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get that there and get that snugged up and go ahead and tighten this down. And last but not least, we're gonna hit this last one here. So what we're gonna do is on the last one, we're basically gonna line everything up. We wanna try to kind of line it up so it's nice and flat. See how this one is a little bit cockeyed, okay? We wanna be able to bring that so it's all level. So we'll probably loosen this one and then just kind of level that one back out now that everything is tight. All right, so you can see nice and flat. Getting this last one adjusted was a little bit, you know, you gotta kind of go past it, but flat is what you want because you wanna see when it mounts up here, we're mounting in that correct position. So go ahead and grab your bolt. First thing what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab our bolt and the washer, remember the spacer, and we're gonna go ahead and just thread this in here to start, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite back on this one. Uh, so usually what I do when I Loctite stuff is I just thread it just a thread in and then a dab of Loctite so it works its way in. And then we're gonna start running the cables back up through here. Um, unfortunately, the cable is kind of in a weird position that it, um, it's got to kind of loop back through here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything mounted and then we're gonna run this wiring and everything there. All right, so we've got the back bolt in. Make sure you get it locked tight before you get this thing mounted. Make sure you put the bolt back there and uh, then we'll go ahead and put a little Loctite on the two big bolts here and then get those Loctite into its original position and uh, then we'll move to the wiring. 
All right, so once we've got everything nice and tight and locked down, this one's still loose, which I'm gonna leave loose just in case. This one's tight, this one's tight. Everything is good. You can see the shifter actually working. We're fine there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread the wiring up and over and in, just like we did stockwise. And we're gonna start to run this down and run this through. And what we have to do is we have had to figure out where to mount this. Now, um, I've, I've, I've been told that there is a lot of um, making sure that this is mounted in the correct position. Also, we don't wanna mount this completely yet until we get everything programmed because the LED is on the inside and I think I wanna use the inside to, to mount this and I think we're gonna go right here. Um, so what I wanna do is we're gonna thread it up and through. So we would pipe it kinda of like we'd normally pipe it and uh, go ahead and get the plug plugged in. So go ahead and snap that in. And then uh, basically now that we've got everything sorted out, now we're gonna be able to turn the bike on and start to read these LEDs and see how it reacts and then start with the programming. All right, so we've kind of skipped a little bit ahead and we've mounted everything. I wanted to take the bike on a quick ride and make sure that it was functioning in the correct direction because the directions were a little bit unclear of uh, push direction or pull direction. Um, push to upshift or pull to upshift or vice versa. So um, you can see we've run the wire, we've got it nice and clean all the way through here. Now the box, we need to get the box mounted as far away from the engine. Unfortunately, we don't have enough cable down here to get it enough to mount it away where uh, they actually recommend actually put it in here, which is actually really, really hot right now. So uh, you've got the EVAP system here, which is plastic. So what I've done is I've mounted it here and we've used their uh, double-sided tape. We've got everything mounted uh, nice here, zip tied here. So we're all ready to go. Now, uh, what I do wanna walk through is the calibration and confirming of the lights and how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and move the camera and get it nice and zoomed in here uh, because there's an LED on the uh, uh, this side here. That's why you wanna mount it facing out so you can get the LED. All right, so now we're gonna be looking at the module and we're gonna watch the programming light. So you'll see up in the upper right hand corner, you'll see there's an LED. Now that LED is gonna turn on and flash twice. You're in standard shift mode. So for your GP shifter, what you're gonna want is you want that light to read one. So what you'll do is you're gonna do reverse of what I'm doing, obviously, because I'm in a standard shift, but when you turn on the bike, you're gonna watch it flash twice. Once it flashes twice, you're immediately, as soon as the second light flash turns off, you're gonna shift the bike up into first, and that's gonna flash about six to eight times, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate in shifting it down, but this is GP shift, so, uh, or we're standard shift, so turn it on. One, two, shift down, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You're gonna see these flashes, continue to hold it, continue to hold it. Once it turns off, you can let go, and now you should be programmed into the GP shift. Now again, you're opposite of what I'm doing. Obviously it's not gonna recognize GP shift because I'm in standard shift, okay? But that should be the programming for the, uh, to go from standard shift to GP shift. Now you can confirm it by turning the ignition off and you'll watch it'll flash twice, once, twice, which confirms that we're in standard shift. Uh, if you get one flash, that would confirm that you're in GP shift. All right, well now you guys will see we've got everything nice and routed all the way through. Everything is nice and zip tied. We can button this up, but basically, uh, again, make sure that this is in a place that it's not hot. I think that this is probably the best place. Don't place this over here, okay? Keep it as far away from the engine as possible. And like I said, we've got it mounted on this plastic thing, which should retain some of the heat, but, uh, that's it, you guys. The Cordona uh, Quick Shifter is on. The programming to it is a little bit finicky, so you'll have to play with the programming. I played with it for about five or 10 minutes before I understand two flashes is standard shift, 
took it out for a quick little ride and um, from just around town, not really on it, uh, it seemed to be working fine. So stay tuned because we're gonna be heading out to the track on Monday, uh, Chuckwalla Raceway, and I'm gonna have this out there and we'll be ripping it up. So stay tuned for a follow-up Cordona quick shifter video, but thank you guys for sticking around. Hopefully this was informational. Hopefully you guys got it installed good. You guys are standard shift. You guys really shouldn't have to mess with the programming. We do have one for Bogna's V2, so stick around for that, you V2 guys. Um, she is in GP shift, so we will confirm if that programming is correct. But uh, thank you again. Uh, make sure you guys do the normal. Hit the subscribe button. Smash that like button. The like button is more important than you guys know, so make sure you guys hit it. Ring the bell notification. Bell notification is going to give you future notification of future content here on the channel. But uh, thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you guys next video. Bye, guys.